Hey folks, this is Vagrant. Welcome back to Horizon Forbidden West. The sun is doing that thing again. <laughs> no, no, uh, there it goes. Okay, so we are continuing to work on our errands and stuff. We don't really have many left, it must be said. Uh, we picked... Thunder Jaw Tail. No. We picked this one up in the last video. There's that lass who misses her long lost lover and she wants me to send him some flowers or something. It's something akin to that anyway, and we're looking for a specific type of flower in the area. Which hopefully... Scarlet stem, that's what we're looking for. Okay, so... Oh, hello, cheeky. Greenshine. I'm in luck. So we need those little pink flowers, uh, just like that. And then we're going to head over and deliver them, and that might well be it. We shall see. So, now we're going to go swing, swing, swing over here. Yeah, sorry it's been a few days again. I don't know, I'm just burnt out of life. <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> I'm just done. <laughs> I have nothing left. <laughs> and sometimes it's hard, but um, I'm going to make a more of an effort this week to, to get Horizon the herbalist. on. Might still be Nilo. Nilo, are you the herbalist? Do you still remember the last that you loved many, many yonks ago? Where is he? I don't like you, Nilo. You live in an awkward place. Where are you? You outside? Must be right. God damn it, Nilo! They're always upstairs. Always upstairs. Always. <laughs> I should always assume. Ah. <sighs> yeah. All right. Okay. How? Okay. I guess we have to go over here first. <sighs> Nilo. Also, you sound like a Devil May Cry character, just so you know. I guess that's because of Nero, but still. Anywho. <laughs> Let's go see if this is going to work. And then we've only got one errand to do after this. And then, and then, we are back onto the main quest. Maybe right to the end. I feel like we've probably done, if not all the side quests. Definitely the, um, the chunky majority of them by now. Alright, Nero. Nilo. I can't see a bloody thing, buddy. You should help me out. You know what, Plain Song used to think you were cool. <laughs> I no longer think you were cool. It's just a pain. No! No! <laughs> Leave me alone. How do I get up? Okay, how do I get. Ah! Ah! And you, my friend. And you. He would live at the top of the bloody thing, wouldn't he? He would live at the hardest possible location to get to. Nilo, I'm tired of your attitude, alright? You old. Hmm. No. Outlander, what can I do for you? You're the herbalist here, right? Are you Nilo? No. Nilo was before my time. I think he went up north a while back to river him. Why? Do you need a special solve? No, but someone else does, in a way. Thanks. I'll try River him. There's a grove there, a, a memorial, a beautiful greenery. If he's there, I, I bet he'll be tending it. Thanks again. Glad I could help. Oh, you're a creepy one, aren't you? I hope you find what you're looking for in River him. Oh, I don't want to talk to you anymore. <laughs> you're a strange one. Am I crazy? There's this, there's this something in the way he speaks that was a little bit disconcerting. Oh. Do you need a special salve? Wink wonk. No, I don't want your special Never salve. Him. I should look for Nilo. Give him the scarlet stems. Succeed. The herbalist in plain song said he might be near the memorial grove. Nilo? Nilo. Did she say Nilo? The first bloom of the winter song. I can feel the heaviness of my ears fade away just by looking at them. They're beautiful. It was good to see the young ones fight for this place. I'll be damned if those sprouts didn't hold their own, strong as the roots of a proud tree. Just don't tell them I said that. Your secret's safe. Now, I better make sure our newly victorious warriors don't injure themselves while celebrating. OK, 
Okay, who said Nilo? Did you say Nilo? You said Nilo. Why did you say Nilo? Hey, you, uh, hi there. Nora, here. You're a long way from home. I suppose I am. I'm looking for an herbalist named Nilo. I think I heard you say his name. You've come to the right place. Oh no. His seeds were buried here, where he tended the blooms of others. Including my mother's. I'm his daughter, Gia. How long has he been gone? Some five years now. He put a lot of love into this grove. Almost as much as he gave me. That's why I could never abandon River Him. I'd like to leave some flowers, if I may, from an old friend of his. <laughs> Scarlet stems. They're rare in these parts, but they were his favorite. I never knew why. He planted them whenever he could, but never picked them. Prefer to just watch them bloom. Sounds about right. So he was a good man who led a full life? He was. And he did. I don't know who this old friend is. But if my father liked them, they must be a good soul. Aww. It's quite an interesting story though, because she... Oh, that was one button. Darika. Is her name Darika? Whatever her name is. Darika. She's kind of come back here because she's kind of like wondering, oh, maybe we can reconnect, maybe he still thinks of me and all this kind of jazz. Where I don't know what she's done in the meantime, admittedly, but he's gone off and he's married or whatever they do and, you know, had a kid and all this kind of jazz. <clears throat> it's just an interesting little sadness to the tale, I suppose. Okay, you get that a lot, you know, at the end of the day, the people you date and the people you well once loved world. and the people you gave your life to, they're going to move on, they're going to find other people. And do their own thing. I'm in the Vida Loca. Is my long vigil over? You have word from my grandmother's gardener? Yes and no. I laid the scarlet stems at his grave. His favorite flower, according to his daughter. Always love to watch them bloom. He's gone. But he did think of me over the years. That'll have to be enough. Really? That's it? Are you sure you got the right guard... Uh, herbalist? Ha. Huh. Seemed like you thought it was a fool's errand. Well, it's just that it meant something to you. It could have been a whole other life. Could have been. But this life hasn't turned out so bad. I even have a granddaughter who cares enough to come looking for me out in the wilds. And I've still got scarlet stems to remind me of Nilo. Sounds like your grandmother's got it all figured out. Maybe she does. Just tell me the next time you want to come out here, okay? Instead of disappearing? Maybe I will. Here, Outlander. Take this. For helping an old woman to remember she was once young. I suppose she had her own life as well. She had kids. She's got granddaughters, you know. They both went and did their own thing. I guess you see that quite a lot. This, it's quite a common story conceit, actually. Actually, the story I'm writing has basically the same conceit. In that, you know, maybe you've got like a crush on someone or maybe two people are kind of like, you know... Uh, they're in school and they get on long well and there's a little something for something there, blah, 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 blah. But when push comes to shove, you know, it never really works out or whatever. Or, you know, you go off to different universities or jobs in different places and all this kind of jazz, right? And then, like, 30 years later, you happen upon each other back in your hometown again. And things are kind of just still there a little bit. And then those people reconnect and they get married and it's their second marriage and blah, blah, blah. There's a specific... Piece of work I'm thinking of this where this happens. With with it's similar to um, Midnight Mass. Midnight Mass has a slightly similar subplot, at least. Marika's armor should be around here somewhere. 
And I'm sure there's a storm bed somewhere as well. Gather armor pieces. Okay, oh, here we go. And I can I can see that. There was okay, I mean I've got it's not quite the same thing, but um a fragment of Farika's armor. There must be more. For example I don't like the sound of that. <laughs> there was a um when I was back at university in Wales, there was a girl who Can I talk about this? Yeah, it's fine. There was a girl I hung around with. She had you know, she had a boyfriend all the time I knew her at university, so nothing happened at any point. I I didn't even you no, know, we didn't we didn't flirt or anything. Oh, I, I wasn't really. Must be the storm bird that killed Farika. I'm not gonna say not aware of her, but because she had a boyfriend, I didn't really think of anything, right? What am I using? <laughs> Do I have any? No, not really. Where have you gone? I can't find. <laughs> there it is, bloody Nora. Sit down. I can't see a goddamn thing. <laughs> you know, screw it. Oh, beauty! Ooh. They don't do that much if you're not using power shots. I don't tend to Get like to use power shots unless uh, I'm at full. Oh, I can override it! I kind of forgot. That would be cool, actually. Why this takes ages? It takes absolutely ages. I don't even want to do this. I'm just gonna kinda. <laughs> I suppose. I wonder how long it resists fighting back. It's got to eventually, right? You'd imagine. Oh, you can see the bar reducing. Okay. I feel like it gained health. I like, it definitely gained health, didn't it? Yeah, so that was actually a terrible idea. <laughs> Generally speaking. Alright. Got my power shots though. Ah! They just, they do so much more when you've got power shots on. So much more. I think I might give up on caring about the max level power shots and just work on uh, you know whenever they're available use them I don't know you better loot the stormbird I might have a scrap of Freak's armor ah, good point anyway so there's, so there's a girl I'm in there's a girl I knew at university and I never really thought about it because she had a boyfriend and you know I'm not gonna go there obviously One more bit of armor. and um, and then we got talking like a few years later when she was single and I was single and it's like, oh, yeah, I was always into you. And, oh, I was always into you. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I hadn't really thought about it at the time. But then it turns out, oh, we, we, there's a thing. There's something going on here, you know? And it didn't turn out to be anything. Um, didn't, didn't really become anything at the end. But uh, it's just Looks interesting. Like another bit of armor. I guess that's it then. I should let the Tanakh know I recovered what's left of Farika's kit. Ooh, cannot see go. a goddamn thing. But the point is, people can kind of... I don't know, the absence and uh, the time between people can kind of... Make people realise what they once had. Or could have had, or whatever. And again, it wasn't that deep with me in this. It was more... You know. But, um... It's a thing. It's a thing. It's a thing in Peep Show as well. Mark has it with... What's the name? Like one of the later seasons, I can't remember her name. But again, that's more. They just have an affair. Well, they try to have an affair. They don't do a very good job. But it's peep show after all. Anyways, anyways, anyways. I can't really remember how I got into this conversation. If I'm totally honest with you. 
Have I talked how much of when was the last time I uploaded? It was Thursday, right? I haven't talked to you since Friday. I haven't told you my story. This is like this is just me ego boosting, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> but you know what? It made my week, so I'm gonna talk about it. Alright, let me do this conversation first. We saw you fly. Did you find Farika? I was able to retrieve her armor. What's left of it anyway? She didn't stand a chance against that stormbird. Ah, I see. A painful end. But not without glory. So, what do you think? Was she the first to fly on the wings of the Ten? She was brave. And spent a fair amount of time in the air. I'd say what she did qualifies. She flew! I knew it! The first to fly! As her successor, you should keep her armor. You can fix it up at the workbench. This way. Once you repair the armor, you're welcome to it. You take after Farika. Bold, brave, and a diplomatic liar. <laughs> she met a harsh fate. Let her have the title. Fair enough. It's kind of you to show such humility. Yeah. Snow's coming down heavy. Haley. Not a perfect. No one's perfect, but she's never really been interested in accolades. If anything, she uh, struggles fairly routinely with them. Tanakh, a sky climber. Okay. Oh. Interesting. That suggests. Right, the fact that. Hmm. I mean, that would certainly suggest that there's more, right? What's this do? I mean, I'm never going to need a few duration. <laughs> Plus two, though. And that suggests there's more than two flying quests, right? Surely? You'd think? I would think. I do think. Uh, what am I working on? Infiltrator next. Oh. Um. Hmm. I'm a little worried that I'll miss them because it's not a guarantee that you can always see them. But there is a like, yeah, maybe stuff will open up post game, or maybe other things will happen or something. That's about all I've got. But that means all side quests done so far, quite a lot, and all errands done so far as well. Which means it's time to assemble our companions. So. As I was going to tell my story. So as you know, I've been working out. Not that I never, I ever mention it at all. And it's, I'm, I'm not mentioning the working out. It's like, oh, look at me, I work out. <laughs> it's more just, it's important to me, right? It's part of my life and it's a big part of my life these days. And it still is. And I was kind of concerned that I'd have given up by now. You know, it's been over three months and I'm still doing it six days a week. Um, yeah, it's a big part of my life. And it's important to me. And when I'm here talking about my life, inevitably it comes up because it dominates so much of my time. But, you know... I'm doing it to get fitter and to look better at the end of the day. Let's not pretend otherwise. You, you you work out and you lift things for your own benefit and for health and to feel strong and capable and all this nonsense and manly gurg. But you also do it to look better, right? And for me, that's going to take quite a long time. There's, I've got to like slim down quite a lot and keep building the muscle, blah, 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 blah. But the other day, right, on Friday, I had a grocery order come in. A shopping order. I can't stop saying grocery. It's very American. I had a shopping order come in, and the woman delivering it was like, you know, this middle-aged woman, 45, 50 years old or whatever, and she parked her car outside the drive and brought down the first set of bags, and I just felt really guilty, it just felt really weird having this woman kind of cart these bags back and forth from her car, I was like, I'm going to come help you, she's like, no, no, don't help me, it's my job, this is what you pay for, right? I'm like, no, I'm going to, I feel guilty, I'm going to help you out. So I went to the car, and she handed me... A couple of bags, and then she handed me another bag and said, Oh, careful, that one's heavy. And then she looked at me and smiled and went, Not that I think that'll be a problem for you. And kind of like, eh? <laughs> And then and then I went super red and walked away. <laughs> Took the bags inside. I know it's not like a big deal, but A, people don't get complimented very often. Men don't get complimented very often. It's quite a, it's a thing. And B, it's the first time I've had it in <laughs> absolute yonks. And it was just a nice... I've been riding that wave for like three days. It was a nice moment for me, you know? I don't really get that kind of thing. I've not had that kind of thing in years. Aloy. So, um... You came back with some interesting... Yeah, that was it. That was the story. Friends. I wish I could say we don't need them. But Silence and Tilda are here for a reason. Even Regala. Yeah. Enemy of my enemy and all that, right? 
Right. I suspect this is about to be a lot of chatting, by the way. You, uh, talk to Tilda at all? I tried. I don't think even a hot forge could melt that ice. And you say she wants to help? I think so. Well, let's hope. Doesn't look like any of our guests are making trouble. Yet. So, Catalo tells me you flew. Well, that's new. I've been busting my bulks trying to learn to read. You're, you're out there having all the fun. Don't worry. You'll be getting all the fun you can handle soon. With the Zeniths. Looking forward to it. It's kind of like a melancholy that I feel has fallen over the group ever since Thingy died. I feel bad, but I can't remember his name. Oh no! Ah, <laughs> oh, son of a gun. I'm just, I'm just terrible with names. I guess Silence is keeping to himself, as usual. I was hoping he'd give me an excuse to hammer his sorry ass to the ground. Please don't. You telling me you wouldn't want to get just one good hit on that smug face of his? After everything he's done? Sure. Later. Right now, he's got something we need. No weapon. I really need to dye this armor. It looks awful. I better get going. Oh, you know where to find me. I must have tried, though, right? Surely I tried to dye the armor. Did I choose this one? <laughs> Was this the best of the options? Zoe, Erend, Beta, Catalo. Why can I remember all of them? Why have I just forgotten the dead? <sighs> Aloy, it appears that we have some interesting new guests. I'm glad to see you're okay, though. I heard you gave the Tanakh something to talk about. I was half expecting you to burst in through the ceiling riding a sunwing. Sorry to disappoint. Ready to head over to the Zenith base? Whatever comes, we will endure. Thoughts on our new Zenith acquaintance? I'd say she smells like death, but even death smells of something. She's more like a cold piece of metal, bent on repelling all semblance of life. She's definitely different. Have you talked to any of our new friends? Erend and I tried speaking to Silence, but apparently our tribal prattle is unnecessary. <laughs> Charming, isn't he? That is very silence. <laughs> How's Aaron doing? For a moment there, he thought Varl. he'd lost both you and Varl. But he never truly succumbed to despair. Guess that Asaram's stubbornness comes in handy sometimes. I will not sneeze. I will. I have to go. <laughs> trust you to keep things civil around here. I'll make sure Aaron doesn't punch silence in the face, if that's what you mean. Thanks. Oh, Val. Uh, right, well, we're going to go chat with everyone. Because we have an interesting bunch of people. My beloved. You... you flew? Cotalo told me. And took out Regala's machines? You know what? I don't even know why I'm surprised. I saw we have visitors and a new weapon. Does this mean we're ready to take the fight to the Zeniths? Almost. You sure you're okay going on this mission? I know things must be happening pretty fast for you. Uh, I've already braved oceans and madmen who thought they were ancestors reborn. Why not a few immortals with lethal drones at their command too? Guess the more the merrier. I swear if Oliver dies, there will be hell to pay. I suppose you saw that Tilda is here, our very own Zenith. I almost went up to her. To ask her, well, every question I've ever had about the legacy. Every diviner I know would kill to get five minutes with one of the old ones. But now that she's here, all I feel is a vague unease. I don't know if I'm scared of finding out more uncomfortable truths or just scared of her. Probably both. Are you okay? I was wondering, is it really safe having someone like Regala here? She seems angry, 
The kind of angry that leads to murdering people in their sleep? Don't worry. We're going to point that anger in the right direction. The Zeniths. If you say so. I hope our new guests have been behaving. The Silence? He's the one who built the weapon that can take down Zenith shields? He is. Though I wouldn't expect him to answer any questions about it. He refuses to dole out his secrets to us lesser mortals. Oh. You know that special part of us that makes us warm, kind, welcoming? Our... spirit? Yeah. He was born without that. I need to wrap up a few things, but stay sharp. I'll be ready when you call. Do, 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 do. What's in the stash today? Oh, hello. All defense plus three. It's not bad. Golden gun. Not bad. <clears throat> Game. I'm always going to have unused coils and weaves. I can't use all of them. <laughs> What kind of madness do you think you're giving me? <laughs> you have 5,000. Oh. Silence? I think you're in here, but I don't know where. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Bravo. Thanks. You managed to sway a zenith to your side. Care to explain? No. Not a chance. Ha! I thought you said the weapon was ready. There's always room to optimize. But that's not why you're here. I assume you want to comprehend my undertakings, so ask away. Since when were you so forthcoming? Since you turned this into a waiting game. And as it seems you have found modest success, perhaps I'm willing to be generous. Okay, so your big plan, everything you've been manipulating for the last few months, let me see if I got this straight. You learned about the Zeniths from Hades when you interrogated it. Then you came up with a plan to defeat them by using a Tanakh army and that weapon. And to get the Tanakh to fight for you, you, or rather the sons of Prometheus, armed Regala's rebels with override tech. Did you have an actual question or are you still playing catch up? So all this time, even before I found the coordinates at the Spire, you were out here scheming. Why couldn't you just tell me? When I learned of the Zenith's return to Earth, I laid out my plans. I knew I would one day require an army of overzealous Tanakh to assault the Zenith base. The casualties would be... extreme. And I knew you would never allow such a sacrifice no matter how necessary. Thus, I devised a means to remove your interference from the equation. At the Hades Proving Lab. You wanted me to surrender to the Zenith at the Hades Proving Lab. They almost killed me. Based on everything I knew about them, I concluded they would find you a useful asset. Thereby keeping you out of harm's way, and more importantly, out of my way. So you really didn't know they had their own clone of Elizabeth? No. Unfortunately, there was no way I could have known that particular detail. Detail? Well, I guess if it wasn't for that, we wouldn't be here today. Tell me about the weapon. How does it work? I've upgraded the delivery system. It now emits a wave-like effect covering a significant distance. That doesn't fully answer my question. No, but I'd be a fool to reveal its inner workings. After all, why did you withhold your plan for dealing with the Zenith drones? Yes, even you can appreciate the value of secrecy when warranted. Suffice it to say that the weapon will work. The intricacies of how is knowledge that is mine alone. Hmm. Why create the Sons of Prometheus? You didn't need a Sarah to make override tech. They were a necessary safeguard. My time serving Hades in the Eclipse demonstrated the risks of getting directly involved. Through the Sons of Prometheus, I could execute my plans, all while remaining anonymous. Except to a Sarah. Why help Regala take over? If you wanted an army, you could have just gone to Hakaro. Before Regala's rebellion, Hakaro was only concerned with battling machines and fostering friendships with the Karja. 
Even if I gained his ear, he would never agree to send his forces to battle a threat he couldn't understand. So helping a bloodthirsty exile was easier? Yes. Exceedingly so. All Regala craved was war against the Karja and anyone who threatens the Tanakht. She would have led the tribe into battle without question, which was precisely what I needed. Should have done this one first. Whoopsie daisy. How did you get Sarah to work for you? I knew there was an associate of the Asaram Tinker, Durval, who escaped his failed assault on Meridian. It was trivial to track her down and gain her cooperation. She wanted to succeed where Durval had failed. So you promised her Regala and the Tanakhth. The Sarah would help you create a machine writing army and wanted to see Meridian burn as much as she did. And so a partnership was born out of thirst for blood, bonded in mutual self interest. You think you had everything figured out, huh? I did. While I was out there, I had a couple run ins with the Quen. The tribe from across the ocean. And? Their entire tribe was shaped around the discovery of focuses. One of them, Alva, even joined me here. Don't you want to know more about them? No. They stumbled upon the greatest technological artifact from the ancient world, and what did they do with it? They shrouded the knowledge they unearthed in mysticism and taboo, creating a pantheon out of corporate shields. Yes, well, it also led them to Thebes. Did it now? Sure did. So those run-ins with the Quen I mentioned. On one of them, I teamed up with their expedition to search Thebes. We found Pharaoh at the end. You must have needed Omega clearance. So, what was it like? Worse than you can imagine. He single-handedly wiped out collective human knowledge. I'm sure it was still less than he deserved. Let me guess. You would have scraped him into a jar so you could prod his brain. Like what you did with Hades. For a start. <laughs> I do like how Silence has just no shame about who he is. Ayla keeps going like, ur, ur, to kind of jab at him. He's just like, yeah, I would, I would do all these terrible things. All in the pursuit of knowledge. All right, Silence. I think I've talked to you long enough. I'll let you know when it's time to go. And try not to mess with Tilda while you're in here, okay? I don't need the two of you butting heads. Ah, uh, yes. About your Zenith ally. I wonder if you understand what kind of person you're dealing with. For someone to live as long as she has, outlast as many calamities, well, your goals may be aligned now, but I'd watch for the moment they diverge. Yeah, I'm aware. Reminds me of someone else I know. Survival is only a necessity to my greater purpose, Aloy. I'd hoped you'd recognize that by now. Do you know something or not? Oh, I know a great deal of things. But on this... Just call it a feeling. Oh, a feeling? You mean you finally had one? Huh. Guess even you can change silence. Ayla's kind of being a pain in the ass. <laughs> like, I get that she doesn't like silence, but we don't need every other line to be, uh, silence, you're a nerd. Uh, silence, I don't like you. Meh. <laughs> you know, it feels a bit weird. Um, I want to talk to the others. This is my place, isn't it? Yeah, what are these? Oh, hello. Hey, Focus. It's Forles. I used to think no Nora would ever accept one. But Varl did. Even when he was overwhelmed. He refused to let me push him away. He was a good egg. Aloy, here's a good egg. Do 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 What else have we got? What's up? With Regala out of the way, Hikaru and Tanakh, they're safe. The future's up to them now. I do wish they'd drop all the honorary names they've given me. But if I've learned anything about them, that is not a battle I am going to win. I've already seen this, haven't I? Yeah, okay. Moving on. I want to talk to everyone. There you are. Hello. <clears throat> well done, Aloy. Despite my 
reservations, you managed to secure silence and his weapon. You're truly a shining example of Liz's fortitude. I've been thinking about what you said at your house. How you were friends with Elizabeth. It was more than that, wasn't it? Perceptive as ever. You're right, we were together for a time. Okay, so... What happened? I was an orphan. I had always been alone. By my 30s, I was starting to wonder if that was simply my fate in life. And then I met Liz. We kept running into each other at conferences. We'd have coffee. At some point, it became drinks. I thought it was just shop talk, an exchange of ideas, but then I was surprised at how much I looked forward to seeing her. Soon we were flying halfway across the world every other week just to meet up. For the first time, I didn't feel lonely. I could imagine a future where I wasn't. I think Liz felt the same way at first. She had lost her mother a few years back. I filled a void for her. I know I did. But as time passed, it seemed as though she wanted less when I wanted more, and so we ended things. So helping me, restoring Elizabeth's dream, it's what? A, a second chance, yes. I made a mistake leaving Earth while Liz stayed behind. I should have done more. So when I saw you, a woman who has carved her own remarkable path, beyond even what made Liz a phenomenon, I knew I had to help you, to do right by her. I like that she's got a, um, can't see it at this angle, but on the other angle, that she's already beaming up some artwork onto the wall and stuff like that. It's very, sorry, her. Why did you make the data channel look like your house? I built that house as a shelter to weather any storm. A safe place, not just for me, but for the art stored in its depths. Cultural artifacts of incalculable value. Truly, some of the greatest achievements of human civilization. And you wanted Beta to see them? Yes. Her upbringing was so cold and technical. I thought if she could experience Vermeer and Rembrandt, it would bring something else into her life. A heritage, every bit as valuable. Data being drummed. I'm sorry, I had to cut off content. She needed... We actually have had that conversation before when we were over the when we were at the house. I wonder if that's the case for all of this. We'll see. Not this one, I assume. Why do you think Elizabeth pulled away? I've wondered that for a thousand years. She was brilliant, visionary. She cared so deeply for the world, for the betterment of humanity. But it also felt like she kept everyone at arm's length, including me. She never wanted to share her burdens. I think, in the end, she had a core that she never let anyone be part of. Sometimes I wonder if anyone really knew her. I found a recording of you and Elizabeth back in the Proving Lab after Farzinet's attempt to steal Gaia. Yes. A most unpleasant conversation. She said something. After the call, I think she regretted how things ended between you. Did she? All this time, thank you for telling me. I've always hated that those were the last words we ever said to each other. And that her last impression of me was as a functionary of Far Zenith, not who I truly am. You said before that you're not like the other Zeniths, that you never were. But you went along with all of their plans. Out of necessity. I'm not proud of it. But complicity became a means of survival, both when Earth was consumed and when the colony on Sirius was destroyed. I did what I had to. But I resolved to remain one step ahead of the others to try to undo what damage I could. Hence the data channel with Beta. 
the secret passage into their base and the little trick I pulled to save you. <clears throat> I'm not saying I full on trust her, but I'm I'm not picking up on what Silence is putting down quite yet. Like what would she what 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 ulterior motive would she have? You know? Maybe she's gonna take Beta for herself because she misses Elizabeth and Beta is essentially enough Elizabeth as well, sort of. Hmm. When it's time to break into the Zenith base, what can we expect? I'll go over the full layout once you've assembled your friends. Suffice it to say, we will need to push as fast as possible to Beta and Gaia's location, dealing with heavy resistance along the way. There are also printing facilities where the others have been amassing the natural resources they've stripped from the region. What for? First for use in the base's infrastructure, and then to fabricate more Spectre drones, a small army of them. When I was out in the wilds, I saw a shuttle take off from the island. Heading for space. It was likely ferrying materials to and from our ship in orbit. After hundreds of years luxuriating in our digital comforts, the ship was barely space worthy when we made our escape. Disaster can strike at any moment we've learned our lesson. Have you figured out how Silence's weapon works? No, and he's been very careful not to allow me near it. I'll admit it bothers me, but Regardless of how it functions, I am confident it will deactivate the other shields en masse. How many of them are in the base? Ten, including Eric and Gerard. Only a handful of us made it to our ship when our colony collapsed. Ooh. So, Eric, was he always a bloodthirsty psychopath? I believe he got worse over time. On Earth, he was the founder of a profitable private military company. A band of cutthroats, in other words. Even as governments abandoned human combatants in favor of automated warfare. He found success with clientele that required a more personal touch. There were also rumors that he personally hunted and killed his targets. On occasion, all for the thrill of it. But on Sirius, he retreated to virtual reality simulations. In them, he could go on rampages as violent as he pleased, though I suspect with diminishing satisfaction. All of us tribe believes he was one of the greatest people from the old world. Then they would be quite disappointed to meet him, though I'm sure he'd bask in the adoration. Would you do that? I don't know. I'm trying, I, I thought about that. I thought, oh, that actually sounds quite fun in a way. You know, just go on a virtual rampage. But then I thought, do I actually want to go on a virtual Would I virtually, even if no one's getting hurt or whatever, would I take joy from... It's kind of like paintball, right? Paintball, you're just shooting people. So it's kind of... Paint, paint, I mean, you're physically doing it, but in a way, it's like a virtual war, sort of. Would it be any different if it was a more accurate virtual war? Hmm. I think there's a difference as well between like shooting someone and melee combat, you know what I mean? I think bludgeoning someone to death is quite different, whereas with a, get a gun you kind of feel like a sense of detachment almost. I don't know, it's interesting. I don't, th I don't think I'd particularly want to do that now that I think about it. Maybe once, see what it's like and then never do it again. What can you tell me about Gerard? He was the head of the world's largest financial conglomerate, and as such, had dealings with almost every major corporation. It made him one of the wealthiest people on Earth, and certainly the wealthiest among Far Zenith. What does one person do with that much money? Buy more, more power, more influence. Gerard's always believed himself to be a refined patrician, able to maintain control with a polished smile. But beneath that exterior is a cold and calculating operator. It was his decision to restrict Beta's upbringing to her digital educators, the avatars of the Apollo database, while we were painted as her benefactors. Well, we'll deal with him soon enough. And the others. I would very much like to see his face when he realizes we've beaten him.
When I was in the ruins of Vegas, I found data on a man named Stanley Chen. I think he was a Zenith. Stanley, ever the optimist. He was one of the good ones. When we established our colony, he built an exact replica of Las Vegas in virtual reality. Lights, shows, gambling, every detail perfectly recreated. And while others cloistered themselves in their own fantasies, he flung his doors wide to everyone. The way you're talking about him, I'm guessing he didn't make it back to Earth? No, he perished when our colony was destroyed. He would have been thrilled to discover that part of his beloved city survived. When Beta escaped and hid in an ancient research facility, I saw another one of the Zeniths, Verbena. Who was she? A dull star amidst a sea of brighter constellations. Unlike most of Far Zenith's members who amassed their wealth through shrewd business deals and technological achievements, Verbena inherited her billions. Her father had achieved great success in the luxury holotourism industry. At age 24, she became the world's most eligible bachelorette, branding herself a life designer. Someone who leverages their fame to influence the choice of others. What, like a cult? In a way, yes. Well, she must have done something right to have survived this long. She was her own brand of ruthless. That much is true. But even rats can cling to a vessel for escape. Okay, so I've had run-ins with a handful of Zeniths. What about the rest? An array of the wealthiest people on Earth. Titans of their industries. And let me guess, all selfish and ruthless to the core? Most, but not all. There were a few with whom I got along. Annika Merjani, for instance, was always delightful. She founded the Holonet's most successful dance channel and was herself mesmerizing to watch. And I had fascinating discussions with Song Jiao about her work in cellular biology. Our immortality treatments are due in part to her achievements. But then there were others like Devin Miller, the CEO of a fast food printing corporation. His only real preoccupations were perfecting his golf swing and taking self hollows. When I think about all of us, we really should have accomplished more. We had eternity. Okay. I'll let you know when it's time. I'll be here until then. And thank you, Aloy, for giving me this chance. My past has always been a struggle. More than once I've lost everything. But when I look to the future, I see Liz's dream fulfilled. A universe of new possibilities. Maybe we can make it happen. We will. I won't let anything get in the way. I promise you that. Oh, little hint. Little suggestion of something there. <laughs> little, little, little something to be concerned about, I think. She's not going to let anything get in the way. And we still have two conversations left to go. And I've got to talk to Gaia. My god. <clears throat> What's this? I see you've got your new arm ready to go. Yes. It still feels strange. I've gotten used to the absence. But no matter. I'm sure I will need it before the attack on the Zenith base is through. Because surely, because I know there's plans for other games, maybe not games in the series, but they want to expand the universe, blah, 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 blah. If they save the world, then... These rebel holdouts don't give up. Then there can't be more games, <laughs> basically, right? I don't know. So maybe it gets to the point where they can do the rebirth and stuff, but it'll wipe out everyone and the Zenith's like, yeah, we'll do it anyway. And like, no, don't do it. And then they have to fight. I don't know. I haven't seen you since the battle at the Grove. How are you holding up? I saw you fly on the wings of the Ten and paralyze Regala's army with lightning. I would say that I am <sighs> inspired. Thank you, I guess. It is I. Who should be thanking you? I like you, Katala. You're a good egg. Things good egg. will get ugly once the Zenus realize we're in their base. You'll need every trick you've ever learned. 
I would have it no other way. Many soldiers died in the old world to make sure we stood here today. We will endure on their behalf. Though, I am curious how you intend to defeat the Zenith's defenses without an army of our own. Leave that to me. Just make sure you're ready to fight. As you say. You have more than earned my trust. I assume we'll go through the plan with everyone beforehand, because this kind of, oh, don't worry about it, I'll take care of it, that really annoys me. Just tell people the plan, you know? <laughs> Did you meet Tilda? There is something about her that doesn't seem natural. I wouldn't be surprised if my sword went through her and, and she didn't bleed at all. Honestly, with her, nothing would surprise me. Look, I know you're probably not happy about keeping Regala around, but I want her on our side when we fight the Zeniths. It is more than she deserves. Even so, I will not question your judgment. Thank you, Catalo. He's a good agony. Your people keep mentioning the Wings of the Ten. What exactly does it mean? The visions tell us that the Ten flew on great metal machines with wings and leapt into battle from the sky. For us, to imitate this feat is the ultimate expression of martial prowess. It is why the challengers leap into the arena during the cool route. And now, you have done it. <laughs> like the deeds of the Ten themselves, it will never be forgotten. So, tell me. How did it feel? I won't lie. Pretty good. I can only imagine. Take your foot a flight one day, buddy. Don't worry about it. I bet people are curious about that new arm of yours. None more than our Quen ally, I assure you. She couldn't wait to take it apart and figure out how it works. I gave her the data I used to build the thing, hoping that would satisfy her curiosity instead. Good luck with that. I have to go, but I'll be briefing everyone on the plan soon. Understood. Who am I still missing? Oh, Regala. Okay, Regala, Regala, Regala. Wherefore art thou, Regala? Are you in there? No. Are you in? No. Are you in? Maybe. There's Gwen stuff in here now. Must be all of us. Okay. Gala. Oh, that's nice though, isn't it? Showing the ones that we've actually accumulated so far. I hope when we come back later on, that's got all of them in there. That'd be cool. We're taking those space lights down. Right, I've done a full loop and I haven't found Regala. Maybe she's downstairs? Could be. That's my room. It's not as easy to find people in this as you would expect. That's, uh, silence. That's an exit, question mark? Yeah. I don't know where she is. There's no indication as to where she is, is the problem. <clears throat> That's Gaia. Why don't we go downstairs? Now that Bates is not down here, maybe Regala's down here. Maybe she's been held down here like a bit of a prisoner, I suppose, would make sense, given the context. Regala! Where are you living, girl? Does she want to live down here? Gala. Ah. This place smells wrong. No sand or wind, only cold steel. And the others up there, your squad. They can hold their own. As for this base, it may not be what you're used to, but it is a shelter. Call it what it is, a cage. You came here on your own. For the battle you promised. So for now I wait in my cage for your word. Tell me when to strike. There's no way Ricardo survives this, is there? The whole time I've been in the West, I've been fighting you and your rebels. I'd at least like to know why. You were among the enemy. 
What more is there to know? Why did you do it? Dorok, Jiroka, Makalo, and the Karja pushed into the desert to raid our people. My brother's squad was among the first to intercept them. But the Karja captured them, strung them up, and burned them alive as an example. It was too late. I found them by the sound of their screams. So you wanted vengeance? Vengeance? No. I wanted devastation. To tear down the Karja's cities and drown the land in blood. Hunt down every last survivor and grind their bones until the sky chokes on the dust. But my chief betrayed me. Betrayed the Tanakh. I do think he's quite an understandable character. I mean, you see your brothers burned alive by an invading force, and then your chief tries to make peace with them? I'd be pissed too. I'd be super pissed. <laughs> How did Hikaru betray you? Hikaru called on the clans to resist the Karja's red raids. But we did more than just defend. We hunted them, and they fled as children before a pack of claw striders all the way to their border. There we ripped down their stone walls. Their domain was ours for the taking. But when it came time to push on, Hakaro ordered us to fall back. What soldier retreats when slaughter is at hand? The kind who wants peace for their people. Peace is just a lull between vendettas. But I thought my chief had greater tactics in mind, so I stood by him, even when he allowed that filthy Karja to join our ranks. Fashav. I enjoyed watching him die at the embassy. He should have been put down when we first captured him on the field. Instead, Hikaro made him a marshal. Fashav told me how he became a marshal. He earned it just like any Tanakh. It was an insult. No outlander can ever deserve to wear our armor, bear our marks. And then a Karja messenger was brought before us? That's when I knew. I had to run my blade through Hakaru and drag his treacherous corpse to the gates of the sun. Didn't work out for you, did it? The thing is, I understand her anger and stuff, but then she's clearly got this big xenophobic... I mean, is it her fault she's raised as a, a Tanakh and a lot of them are kind of, you know? How responsible are you for how your upbringing shapes you? I was like, oh, everyone has this theory that, oh, you're an adult, you make your own decisions and you choose who you want to be eventually. And that's true, but only to an extent. You know, if you're raised a certain way, it shapes your mentality, it shapes who you are, it shapes how you process things and how you think about things. It's not as easy as just going, oh, just change your entire personality, just be a different person. I think people overrate that. And it's always people in nice situations who think that, right? What happened when the Karja messenger appeared before Hikaru? A quivering priest bore a message from their new king. No more war. No more rage. Suddenly, the Karja wanted to talk peace, an embassy at the very fortress we tore down. A true Danak would never take a Karja truce. Their blood exists to be spilled, but a Karo lapped up the priest's message. He showed himself a Karja-loving traitor when he accepted. That's when I challenged him. And lost. His mercy was just another sign of his weakness. I vowed never to rest until the debt was repaid, with him on his knees before me. So with an army of soldiers and machines at my back, I returned. The day you got in my way. The deal you made. Override tech in exchange for an assault on the Zenith base. How did Silence approach you? That name means nothing to me. My agreement 
was with the Asarama Sarah and her sons of Prometheus. So all this time, you didn't even know who you were really dealing with? And you trusted an outlander? If it was a trick, I would have crushed her. But she spoke with the same burning hatred for the Karja. And she offered me the chance to run them down with machines. The terror in your enemy's eyes when they see you charge. You know what I'm talking about. I bet you felt it. I don't think so. What about your end of the deal? Would you have honored it? Had I killed Akaro and become chief, these Zeniths would have been the first of the tribe's victories, but because of you, my people will continue to consort with the enemy. A tribe of weaklings. <laughs> because of me, hundreds of Tanakh won't throw away their lives in a battle they can't win. <laughs> Good, good retort there, yeah. Tch, exhaling. <laughs> good response. Are you really going to fight alongside me? I have no reason to betray you. Really? I failed to kill Hakaro. Failed to eliminate you. No Tanakh would follow me now. The Karja remain out of my reach, cowering behind their walls. All I have left are the screams of those long dead and unending rage. So show me where to bury it. She's an intense lass. All right. I guess we'll both face the end soon enough. Ever since you got in my way, I've wanted to see your bones burned white beneath the sun. But if I'm to die in battle, then it might as well be with the one who flew with the wings of the ten. I'll let you know when it's time to move out. Oh, perfect time to end it. I've got a delivery coming. So, thank you very much for joining me. I'll see you love folks very soon. Cheers, much love as always, and a big old bye-bye.